From 1392 to 1897, the Choson dynasty presided over the entirety of the Korean peninsula. However, as the rule of the Choson monarchs began to wane in the late 1800s, the neighbouring empire of Japan began making their first overtures into Korea. This would eventually lead to their complete annexation of the peninsula, subjugation of the Korean people, and a whole host of other atrocities, the legacy of which is still very much relevant in the region. However, another remnant of this period was the creation of the modern-day capital of Kangwon province, the coastal city of Wonsan. To explain how Wonsan came into being, we have to first jump back to the Choson dynasty. Historically, through Korea's history, the peninsula maintained close ties with China, limiting most of its trade to its northern neighbour. The Japanese, however, did conduct limited trade with Choson through a small outpost at Tongne, near Busan. Following the Kanghua incident, during which a Japanese gunboat opened fire on Choson fortresses on Kanghua and Yongjong Islands, the Japanese used the presence of their powerful navy to force the Choson government into the first of many unequal treaties. The Japan-Korea Treaty of 1876, among other things, forced the Korean side to open three new trading ports designed to proliferate trade with Japan. They were Incheon, Busan, and the topic of today's video, Wonsan. Originally opened on the 1st of May 1880 for Japanese use only, the new port of Wonsanjin, known as Genzan to the Japanese, was later opened for trade with other countries in November 1883, after which it was known by the Russians as Port Lazarev. Maps from the time show how the area developed between the early 1880s and the 1890s as the new port expanded. The Japanese continued their imperialist ambitions throughout Korea, reflected in the demographics of Wonsan. In 1897, the year the Joseon Kingdom gave way to the Korean Empire, Wonsan was home to 235 Japanese. Three years later, that number had increased to 1,560. As the port itself grew under the Japanese occupation, so did the city. A population of 31,000 inhabitants in 1923 grew to 61,000 by 1936, 79,000 by 1940, and 122,000 by 1942. During the occupation, Wonsan underwent heavy industrialization, something mirrored in Chongjin, further north, which you can find out about in this video. Although Wonsan has, since the foundation of the DPRK in 1945, become more focused on tourism than trade and industry, the remaining shipbuilding, railway stock construction and light industry still based in the city derives from its time as a major eastern seaport. With the redrawing of the provincial borders after the liberation of Korea, Wonsan moved from South Hamgyong province to the northern half of the divided Gangwon province. Unfortunately, this wasn't the end of Wonsan's tumultuous history. The Korean conflict during the 1950s saw the city of Wonsan hit hard by US bombing. 80% of the city was destroyed by ground warfare and heavy carpet bombing, which obliterated almost all of old Wonsan, as it did in most cities and towns around the DPRK. Much of the damage, however, was a direct result of naval artillery. Whilst southern forces managed to take Wonsan, they couldn't hold it for long, resulting in an evacuation from the port as soldiers of the Korean People's Army and Chinese People's Volunteer Army advanced on the city. Between February 1951 and the end of the war in 1953, the city was under a severe blockade by the US Navy, including an almost constant artillery barrage, part of various attempts to break the will of the defenders in Wonsan. However, by the time of the armistice, Wonsan was still firmly in the hands of the DPRK. The blockade of Wonsan 
was the longest naval blockade in modern history. But what's happened since 1953? Today, Wonsan isn't so much a military harbour or hub for eastern trade, but a well-known tourism destination for local Koreans from all over the DPRK, as well as international visitors. Since the Korean War, whilst the trade industry may not have returned to the same level as before, the city is still a centre for fishing, as well as chemical industry, textile production, and is located nearby the city of Munchar, a centre for mining. However, this isn't quite what Wonsan is known for by Koreans. A few kilometres north of the city centre is the Songdaewon Resort, a popular holiday destination for Koreans, and home to a long sandy beach, zoological gardens, and other attractions for holidaymakers. It's also home to the Songdaewon International Children's Camp. Originally completed in the 1960s, the camp was designed to host children from all over the world and provide a place for activities, games, and allowing children from across the globe to foster international cultural relations. Despite the end of the Cold War, children continue to visit from overseas annually, spending a part of their summer at Songdaewon alongside Korean children. This focus on Wonsan as a holiday destination resulted in the establishment of the Wonsan Special Tourism Region in 2014, which saw a push to focus the city on tourism both foreign and domestic, with the construction of new resorts, hotels, and by incorporating many previously popular tourist attractions around the city and region. The Wonsan Kumgangsan Special Tourism Region covers 440 square kilometers, and at the time of writing, includes some amazing historical sites, as well as some of the best new tourist-centric developments that the DPRK has to offer. Examples of this include the Masik Ryong Ski Resort, completed on New Year's Eve 2013 and located 20 kilometers away from Wonsan. Much of the new development has focused on hotels and resorts on the Kalma Peninsula, where construction has boomed since the beginning of the project. The new Kalma International Airport, located on the Kalma Peninsula, was designed to be a gateway into Wonsan from foreign countries and was completed in 2015. Currently only operating domestic air courier flights, Kalma is within range of many regional hubs, allowing the potential for foreign tourists to fly directly into Wonsan on holiday, rather than visiting via Pyongyang. On the topic of transport, Wonsan is connected to the rest of the country by road, rail and air, as well as having international links via sea and its own urban transport network. As previously mentioned, Wonsan Kalma International Airport is served by Air Koryo and is one of the many airports dotted around the DPRK. Wonsan Railway Station sits on the Kangwon Line, running from Pyongyang at the demilitarized zone up to Kowon, where it joins the Pyongna Line, which terminates at one end in the capital, Pyongyang. You can find out more details about the Korean State Railway in the first video on this channel. It is, of course, possible to travel to Wonsan from Pyongyang by road along the Pyongyang-Wonsan Highway. Travelling to Wonsan from the capital will take you past the tomb of King Tongmyeong, through Koksan and past the Xinpyeong Rest House, the 700 Ridge Pavilion, before finally arriving in Wonsan after a 200km drive. Until 2006, Wonsan was an international ferry port often greeting visitors from Japan. Starting in the 1970s, the Mangyongbong Ferry transported passengers from Niigata port in Japan to Wonsan, many of whom were members of the Chongnyeon, the General Association of Korean Residents in Japan, many of whom moved to Japan during the Japanese occupation and still tie their cultural identity to the DPRK. Wonsan's urban transport network consists of a city trolleybus, similar to that of Pyongyang 
They're also planning to construct a tram network, which will run through the Wonsan Kalma resort complex. The city of Wonsan is unique in the DPRK. Due to the focus on tourism and leisure, rather than heavy industry, such as in Chongjin, or ancient history, such as in Kaesong. It's also symbolic of the steps being taken in the country in opening up to encourage foreign visitors. The Wonsan Kalma Resort targets international tourists just as much as domestic ones, and the glistening new international airport is very much symbolic of that. Settlements have existed near Wonsan for hundreds of years. Whether it be the small fishing villages of the Koryo dynasty, the port towns of Choson, the military ports of the Japanese, or the seaside resorts of modern Korea, this area has always held some significance. Significance that's unlikely to disappear anytime soon. Thanks for watching the latest edition of DPRK Cities. I hope you enjoyed finding out a little bit more about one of the DPRK's most interesting cities. Please like the video, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. And please let me know if there's any topics you'd like to see me cover in the next episode of DPRK Explained. Thanks for watching.